The horrible fate of a Spanish couple who visited India has reignited a fierce debate over cultural relativism. Vincente and Fernanda, known to their audience as Vuelta, Almundo and Moto, around the world by motorbike, are travel vloggers who have visited over 60 countries since the beginning of their journey from Barcelona five years ago. <laughs> Then they visited India. Seven young men attacked and robbed the couple before Fernanda was horrifically gang raped. The couple explained to their 200,000 Instagram followers what happened. They'd stopped in Dumkar to rest and pitch their tent near a market, but after falling asleep, seven young men broke into the tent and assaulted them both. They beat us, they put a knife to my neck, and they told me they were going to kill me, Vicente says in one of the videos, his lips swollen and appearing to be stitched up. Fernanda was raped, seven of them, seven men, sons of bitches. And bear in mind, this didn't even happen in some far-flung area of India. It happened in a major tourist location. Some of the culprits were swiftly arrested, but others remain on the run. Now, of course, no one is suggesting that anyone other than the vile cretins who did this are responsible. But Vincente and Fernanda subsequently posted videos to Instagram pushing back against the generalisation that India is particularly bad for this and that the country itself should be negatively scrutinised. Y, y no penséis que India es así. India es un gran país. Es un gran país y vale la pena visitarlo con sus cosas buenas y sus cosas malas. Y eso ha sido un incidente y no eso nos tiene que dejar el recuerdo de, de un país malo, no es así. La gente, los indianos son buena gente, hemos pues chocado con... Unos indeseables que lo sí. que esperamos es que se mueran en la cárcel. Pero no hay que generalizarlo, la policía está haciendo todo lo que puede. They expressed anger at commenters who suggested that India was a more dangerous place to visit than western countries. Cantidad de cosas absurdas que es impresionante la incultura de la gente. La cuestión es que esto Una violación, un robo, puede pasarte a ti, a tu hermano, a tu madre, a tu hija, a todo el mundo. And they even went on to say that countries like India, Iraq, Afghanistan and Pakistan were, quote, much safer than Europe. Esto le puede pasar a cualquier viajero, novato, experimentado o cualquiera. Nosotros hemos acampado en 66 países. Hemos estado acampando en Irán, en Afganistán. En Pakistán, en India, en Arabia Saudí, en muchísimos países. Nunca hemos tenido un problema. Sí ha venido gente a curiosidad. La gente, la mayoría, la gran mayoría de la gente es buenísima, buenísima. Y seguridad, hay mucha más seguridad en, en Asia... Asia que en Europa. Eso oh, lo America. podemos garantizar. Sí. Bueno, Safe to say that a lot of people disagreed with that view. The level of sexual aggression I witnessed while living in India for several years was unlike anywhere else I've ever been. Once a total stranger, a British woman, asked to sleep in my bed and pretend to be my girlfriend on a train ride because a man walking by in the hall had licked her foot and she felt unsafe. I introduced a female friend to a young Indian man and instead of shaking her hand, he groped her breast and when she became angry, he became extremely hostile. I thought I was going to have to fight the guy. A female user named Sasha wrote, I spent six weeks in India, it was supposed to be three months, nearly 15 years ago. I was 21 and travelling solo and it was honestly the worst place I'd been on earth. Wild animals would have more restraint than Indian men, got sexually harassed all day, every day, I'd never go back. Are some countries more dangerous than others? And is moral and cultural relativism placing western tourists in extreme danger? We'll try to answer those questions after this. You wanna know what I was doing over the weekend? <laughs> Good lord, what's this? The year is 20XX. Globalist oligarchs from the Lucius Lux Corporation have seized power. With global governance established, individuals and their data are registered in the cyberverse. Europeans have been transformed into beyond humans by a brain implant, losing identity and control to an AI-controlled reality. <laughs> Corporation plans to build back better with complete dominion over the world. But the resistance is here, and you're leading it. You are Human 1028. One man against an empire. He's not just fighting for himself, he's fighting for Europa. And along with your allies, you form the last bastion of mankind, aiming to dismantle the corporation and ferment the Great Rebellion. Make Europe great again. <laughs> You'll probably recognize some of the final bosses. I'm to groom you for the spider. 
engage in fast-paced combat across randomly generated levels made up of thousands of handcrafted rooms rendered in beautiful pixel art. Choose from over 60 weapons with unique abilities and find countless items that give you special powers. Immerse yourself in intense action sequences and epic battles with dynamic music by synthwave artist Retro Rebel. The Great Rebellion is roguelike with lots of upgrades and permadeath options. So if you want to have as much fun as I did, you can download the game from Steam via the link below. And bear in mind the creators are a small startup company. And as you can probably tell from the content, they're very much like-minded individuals. It's never been more important to support people in this kind of artistic space. So please click the link down below to download The Great Rebellion. <laughs>Despite what happened to them, Vincente and Fernanda assert that India is no different to other countries and even safer than Western Europe. And despite comments like this appearing on their Instagram page in response to this video nearly a year ago from someone in Pakistan, welcome to Pakistan, but please follow the dress code in this country. The way you dress up here is not considered right and might lead to unfortunate events. There's a reason why Delhi is known as the gang rape capital of the world. A Thomson Reuters survey canvassed 500 150 global experts in women's issues. The outcome? India is the most dangerous country in the world for women. The number of Western European countries that appear in the top 10 of that list? Zero. The top 10 most dangerous countries in the world for women are India, Afghanistan, Syria, Somalia, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Yemen, Nigeria, United States. Crimes against women in India have risen by more than 26% in five years. The BBC notes that India has earned the moniker the rape capital of the world due to the tens of thousands of cases every in 2015, for example, a woman in India reported a rape every 15 minutes. And it's believed 90% of them aren't even reported at all. What happened to the Spanish travel vloggers returns us to questions that I've asked many times before. Is the intensive re-education program currently being inflicted on Western populations that the world is a multicultural utopia? And that all cultures, customs and countries are equal? Incentivizing Westerners to travel to dangerous, crime-ridden, low-trust locations. Under the the false pretense that they don't have to be overly concerned about their safety with disastrous consequences. And why does the media and the travel industry constantly run messaging telling women to travel to dangerous countries alone? India is not a safe country to travel in. While not dangerous like a country at war, it's a nation of unimaginable corruption at levels that would shock an average Westerner. And it's barely civilised even in many popular locations like Agra where the Taj Mahal is, especially because your skin colour marks you as a target in ways you can't hide. Liberal Americans have this view of the rest of the melanated world as one big song of kumbaya crying out against the oppression of the white west. This could not be further from the truth. There are so many chilling examples. The lone Scandinavian female hikers who visited a dangerous part of Morocco. One of whom had previously posted a video on Facebook of a bearded Muslim man saying never judge people by their appearance. They were raped and beheaded by Islamic jihadists. The performance artist who said she would backpack across the Middle East to send a message of peace and marriage between different peoples and nations. Raped and strangled to death in Turkey. The liberal activist who travelled to Haiti to raise awareness about violence towards women. She said she was, quote, committed to preserving the dignity of black men in a world which constantly stereotypes them as violent savages. Thankfully she survived, although she was raped on a rooftop, but still later blamed the white patriarchy. Then there was the left-wing couple who cycled through the Middle East and the Balkans. Before embarking on their journey, they wrote on their blog, you read the papers and you're led to believe that the world is a big scary place. People, the narrative goes, are not to be trusted. People are bad. People are evil. I don't buy it. Evil is a make-believe concept we've invented to deal with the complexities of fellow humans holding values and beliefs and perspectives different from our own. By and large, humans are kind. Generous and wonderful and kind. No greater revelation has come from our journey than this. They were ran over and stabbed to death in Tajikistan by Islamic extremists. There's a dozen and other examples just in recent years, but if I included them all, this video would be an hour long. By embracing moral and cultural relativism. By believing the world is just one giant happy melting pot. Leftists have projected their own self-delusion onto the globe, with harrowing and deadly consequences.